what's up guys it's LaShawn and I'm back with another design with a pro video now I know that you guys have seen my lounge area before but there is a new addition um, the fireplace which you have not seen yet and also I want to say what's up to all of the new co-stars that we have now we're getting close to 10k um, I don't know when you'll be watching this video so maybe by the time some of you watch this video I'll be way past that but We'll see how that goes. Anyway, I know that a lot of you are here because you want to know all about the tiny home shenanigans, and that's all well and great. I'm gonna bring it to you whenever I can, however I can, but as I always say, I am not a one-dimensional person. I am so sorry, but I have to do other things, and I know that I'm supposed to be here to please my audience, but at the same time, I feel like if I'm not being authentic, then my audience is gonna see right through me anyway. So I might as well just be myself and bring the content to you, how the content comes to me through living my life, through being LaShawn. Hold up. Today, I'll be focusing on my mid-century modern design and how that came about from my two thrifted lamps from the pawn shop. If you haven't seen that video, it'll be right up there, linked, but make sure you finish watching this video and then you can go and check that video out. I'll probably link it in the end of this video as well. And for you older Cold Stars, don't be telling it, don't be giving it away. Let them go and watch the video, okay? Also, I'll be focusing on my slat wall design, which is very mid-century modern. I'm not going to get into the whole entire history of MCM, AKA mid-century modern, mid-century mod, because that's not my job. If I wanted to do a whole documentary on mid-century mod, then I would do that, but I'm not doing that today. So today I want to show you the nuts and bolts I want to give you a little bit more of the behind the scenes so we're going to be doing a much deeper dive into the lounge area there is a new addition to the lounge area the fireplace and you'll get a chance to see that so if you have seen this area before you may have seen it where there was a cabinet and a white shelf below um there that's gone um well i don't say it's gone it's been MacGyvered. Anyway, um, yeah, let's get into this video and uh, yeah, that's it. Let's get in. All right, co-stars, so let the games begin. This is my Bay Area that came with my rig and I love it. It was probably the biggest selling point for me was to have this bay window in the front. And I wanted to do a day bed in the front, so I'm calling it my bay bed. Actually, I'm glad I didn't do that. Um, but then instead of customizing something, I decided that I'm gonna probably put, ugh, probably put a sofa table in the back to accommodate these beautiful lamps that I found, and then you'll see why these lamps had to be here. Everybody wanted these lamps to find a home. So I had to find a home for them. So that means that this whole configuration um, is getting revamped. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking out these cabinets right here so I can figure all this out. I need to get all my measurements right before I start ordering things or buying wood, all of that stuff. So. Um, yeah, stick around because this is coming out. All right, co-stars, let's get it. So what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at how I took this outdated RV and turned it into a beautiful tiny home on wheels. So 
so here's another look at it before I started gutting and then obviously once it was finally gutted and I did end up taking that shelf above out okay guys so now is the perfect time for me to jump in here and talk about these lamps I didn't think that I had the space for them but I took the video and I sent it to twin P what's up girl um, and she's also an interior designer and I sent these to her and she said girl 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 if you don't get those lamps i'm gonna fight you so basically i had no choice but to go back to the store in the morning when they opened up and like i was there bright and early bushy tail 9 a.m waiting for them to open up that store so i can get those lamps so i got the lamps i wasn't even sure where they were gonna go but i put them out on a video and you guys you guys were like you better keep those lamps if you don't want those lamps send them to me here's my address da, 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 da. like so i knew that these lamps had to be used in this home so these lamps that you see pretty much inspired this whole entire area even though i was already going down the mcm road because i had already bought my tulip table so I knew that this is a style that I've always loved. Uh, once I got these lamps, it was game over. Okay, first of all, I realized that I just said the word lamps about eight times in a two minute span, and that makes nine. Anyway, I do love the warmth that they give off and that glow at night. Moving right along, I knew that along with the slat walls, which is also coming up, so just be patient, I didn't want to do paint so I decided to go with these um, foam 3d wall tiles that I put throughout this area in order to be sort of a contrast with the wood slats but also be that organic feel that you would get from a lot of the MCM style there was always sort of some flow going on along with the um, straight uh, vertical lines or horizontal lines. There were a lot of things that was just straight and to the point, kind of industrial, but then you also had the free form flowing style in the furniture and the designs. I wanted to bring that in, so I did that with this 3D wall tile. It's kind of like wall art, I guess yeah it brings a lot of texture in so i did the 3d wallpaper first and yeah let's just take a look how that went um well it went but it didn't get there easily basically it has this paper backing that you have to pull off and the back of these tiles are really really tacky um part of the problem is that i was not able to get the paper off in one shot so it was giving me a hard time i'm not sure that this is something that i would do ever again if it wasn't on a straight wall i have a lot of angles and therefore it was making things a little bit more difficult for me i mean it sticks pretty well but again where i'm at the temperature can change a lot so I have had to put liquid nails behind to keep things to stick even more. It was definitely time consuming. And um, again, if it wasn't a straight wall, I probably would not recommend this application. I ended up having to go in with a lot more trim than I had originally expected. And that's because I had to do a lot of cut-ins. So yeah, this is a 3D wall tile that I got from Amazon. And once I get my storefront set up, I'll let you guys know I'm working with Amazon right now on the influencer program so that I can have my storefront and then everything that I use in here from Amazon, which is a lot, you guys can just go ahead and click on and be able to purchase it or at least look at things that are, you know, in that same family compatible and purchase it. If you do that, then I'll get a couple pennies from it, which would be nice. So yeah, let's move on. Once I was done installing the 3D tile wall, I knew that it was time for me to go ahead and move on into 
this wall which was going to have the slats on it I went ahead and started out by putting up a black wallpaper I know that a lot of you guys are afraid of using dark colors but don't be afraid black is such a sexy sophisticated color and it makes the wood that's gonna sit on top of it pop a little bit more um, so definitely don't be afraid of black I went with a wood textured black wallpaper now I had never installed this kind of paper before it was self-adhesive however I thought that I was gonna be you know smart and put a little bit of glue behind it to make it even more sticky big mistake because the glue that was on the back of the wallpaper didn't like the glue that was on the wall and therefore I ended up with some air bubbles I really don't care that much seeing as I have the slats over it and it's not something that sticks out so much so I really don't care um, it still looks really good but definitely don't be afraid of using black don't be afraid of painting black I really wish I had went with paint instead and if I was gonna do another slat wall I would do paint behind it more than likely uh, but definitely don't be afraid of using black black is such a sophisticated color it's sexy it's grounding and you know it makes whatever sits in front of it pop so even though I have all these white walls in here um, the black I think is very grounding in this space there were areas where I needed to sand down because when I removed the cabinets there was some damage from where the screw holes were or where I may have cut the wall so I went ahead and sanded all of that down and got it nice and smooth and used a um, paper towel to wipe away the dust you can use a tack cloth knowing me I couldn't find mine so I just went ahead and used the paper towel and removed the extra dust because it will make the wallpaper harder to stick if there's dust on the wall so just make sure you don't forget that make sure you're using a tape that is going to be easily removable because you don't want to tear up the tiles again it's a foam so you want to make sure you don't use a tape that's going to pull it away now that I had a good idea of what direction I was going in I knew that it was time for a trip to Lowe's so I get to Lowe's and I bought a test strip, brought it home, stained it, worked out perfect. It was a redwood. I loved it. And then I went back to Lowe's, bought a whole bunch of them, and turns out that they had the wrong wood and the wrong slat. And so when I stained it, it did not come out the way that I expected it to. So needless to say, I ended up going through a couple of different woods and I ended up buying actually the cheaper uh, slat of wood and I ended up sanding it and I stained that with two different stains. I used a Minwax. Anyway, I used two stains and so you're probably not going to end up with the mixture that I got because one is a Minwax and the other one is a stain that I got from Ikea. So one had more of a reddish tone, the other one had more of a brownish tone and I ended up mixing those in order to come up with the look that I got. So what I'm actually doing is countersinking into my wood with this one and then driving the screws in with that one. I'm not doing too much adhesion in case I need to change my mind or something. I'm just doing one screw on the top and the bottom and I'm cutting the wood so that it actually fits a bit snug. However, things will expand and contract. And yes, I'm working around all of my things because I live in a tiny home and so there isn't always a place to put them. So as you can see, I did fuck one up, so I had to piece it together, but it's fine because it'll be hidden behind the mirror. So right there is where I fucked up and I cut something short. I don't know how, but so I went ahead and added the wood filler and I'm going to add the rest of the slats at the top. Okay, I'm being greedy. Goddamn savage. Alright, so 
I know you guys are anticipating seeing the finished product. Some of you have already seen it, but I just want to give a special shout out to my valances. The valances that I made, I actually ended up using a wood that looked like lattice, which is also a nod to the 1960s, 70s, that lattice feel. I ended up staining that with a Minwax as well. And I, for this one, only used the brown because I wanted to give it a walnut feel and it worked out great. I ended up cutting these little pieces and I used liquid nails to stick them on. I know a lot of people like to use hot glue, but in my opinion, liquid nails works better and it lasts longer and hot glue has a tendency to like dry out and then fall apart. I love the valances, the way that they came out. I got these five done and I have the five windows. So I ended up getting those done and then later on, I did the other ones for the other windows. If you are curious about the floors, it is the same flooring that I use to lay throughout my entire home. It runs from front to back. And if you missed that one, it was in my Design with the Pro, the kitchen series video. So it's from Home Depot if you're interested. Uh, so you can go ahead and find it there. Lighting, lighting, lighting. I always tell you guys, lighting is the jewelry of the room. I was really happy with the lighting that I was able to find for this space. I actually found that antique bulb. Well, actually John found that antique bulb at Walmart and he goes, is this gonna work? And I was like, I think it will. So we weren't sure if it was gonna fit up into the light fixture, but it fit and it looked perfect and I absolutely love it. As much as I would have loved to have a traditional Sputnik light fixture, um, it wouldn't have worked in this space because they're usually on the large side. I had a fan and I decided to remove it because it wasn't doing much. Um, so yeah, as you see, I had Ivan over there taking it out and then he was checking all the electricals so we could go ahead and run them to this light fixture because we knew that the fan was going to be running on a standard um, vault. We went ahead and ran that over so that the light fixture could be a standard light fixture and not your RV 12 volt light. So that's why I was able to put in a normal bulb in there. So make sure you are always checking your voltage to see what you can actually have in that space, okay? Because all of my other light fixtures are all 12 volt light bulbs. All right, we don't want any fires. Mm-hmm. Look at me. These are so good. They're called... Huh. Snacklings, and they're plant-based. They should be called cracklings, because I'm addicted to them. They are so tasty especially the nacho flavor i'm not a big fan of the barbecue flavor but it's an expensive habit so now i hope you love the fireplace in tree i like it because it's also a heater so it heats up the space as well as give that ambient feel i know you probably think fireplace vegas well sometimes it's all about the ambiance and sometimes it gets cold out this let me get my let me get my sexy back on. Hold on. Let me get my sexy back on. I'm bringing the sexy back. All right. <sighs> Make sure I don't have any crumbs on my face because you know these cameras like to be picking up everything. Like that booger. Remember that time I had that booger in my nose? The fireplace is a new addition. For those of you who saw my home before, you probably saw it with the white shelf and the cabinet that was below. Okay, took some trial and error, but I finally got it done. Had to put some screws on the sides there to secure it. But I finally got the box built and it is open in the back so that it follows the safety guidelines. And I'm happy. Let me 
I'm gonna go ahead and put the brick on it. So I ended up using some scrap wood to shore up the back so it doesn't wobble. Now I'll probably do a little bit more, but that's gonna be the brace. And I put it on wheels. So instead of it having to be on a TV bracket, I can just wheel it out. So I moved my television bracket and I MacGyvered, because you know me, I like to MacGyver the out of things. So I MacGyvered that cabinet, I MacGyvered the shelf, and I used a peel and stick tile to create a stone look to go around my fireplace box. All right, now it's time to check out the finished product. I hope you like it. Enjoy that version of Design with a Pro, my lounge edition. And stick around to the end. Make sure you ring the goddamn bell. First, you have to be subscribed, and then you can ring the goddamn bell. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and you go ahead and watch another video, or at least let another video play so that the algorithm will show me some love. I wanna keep bringing these videos to you, but I have to ask you to do your part because it's hard out here for these brown girls, okay, on this platform. It's really hard for us. I will be back for another video as soon as I possibly can, but do me a favor, do all of the things that you know I need you to do in order to help this channel to grow. I was a little bit butt sore because my last video, if women were beautiful did not do nowhere near as well as i expected it to but i had to come to the realization that it's not about how many people i reach but the depth of that reach so i know that a lot of people were touched by that video and I hope at some point the algorithm does realize that it is quality material and it'll start pushing it out to other people, hopefully, because I think women need to see that video. I'm gonna go because my camera is acting a goddamn fool. I don't know if it's the new microphone, but it keeps overheating and shutting off, so I have to keep repeating myself and doing this over and over. So let me go ahead and just say this. I love you. Bye! All right, all right, y'all made it to the end of the video and I got some special shout outs. I got a special shout out for Joy Peace, Hi From Marisa, Effie's World, Mir Gemini, Real Scratcher Slots, and Big Mad Star. Thank you to all of you for leaving your comments. I appreciate it. If you're gonna be here, let another video play. Other than that, have a great day. Love you.